Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. Hope everyone's doing well. So I got requested by Jason the other day or three days ago. I'm looking at the chat messages right now um, to do a bit of an expansion on the skill trees and he wanted some disable functionality added. I will give fair warning. I had to do some overhauling in the back end to make this work. Um, I will put this up on the Google Drive because uh, it gets a little confusing, but I'll try to explain it in a way that makes sense. Um, before I get into it, though, massive thank you, you guys. You are all amazing, and you have no idea. Now, let's get into it. So, what have I changed? First thing first, I'm going to load it up and show you. As you can see, one, I've got a new skill set here, and two, nothing else has changed. So... If I click on, let's say, the shields, you can see it does the same thing. If I click on the hearts, it does the same thing. If I reopen it, if I click on the heart here, here, you'll see then this new tree opens up as well. So this is um, shield, health, regeneration. I wasn't being inventive. I just wanted something that I could work out. Okay, the way this works, like I said, I've overhauled it a little bit. So under the create function, this has become a bit more in-depth. So, originally I just had a very basic um, handover skill, upgrade to next skill. I've had to make it a little bit more smart than that just to enable some better functionality for future proofing and development stuff. So, the first step here is I've got a disable tree. So, if I go here and set this to true, if I can spell, set that to true. So, this is the shield skill tree. And if I run that now with that flag set to true, you'll see I can't modify that skill tree at all. So I can still go through and modify the other trees, but not the shield tree. Because it's now set to false, oh sorry, true, as being disabled, it will no longer allow me to modify that. And I'll show you guys how I achieve that because it has to be done based on a button to button level. So I'll return that to false for now. Um... So basically what I've done here is this is the, these two are basically the same. They're just the skills. So normally you'd have a skill to keep track of and then a player skill, which you would then hand over to the player character. So this adds, acts as an intermediate. Um, and this would normally be like a point value. So you'd have like mm, 0 0.01 multiplied by shield value added to shield, if that makes sense. Uh, the next step here is I've got this thing called a temp ID. Um, you guys may have seen me use this in the past, may not have. I'm going to recover quickly what that does. So temp ID for anything I program is normally to do with an instance call. So this normally, when you create an object, you create an instance. I can store that into the temp ID, and then what I can do in the next line down, this will not work if you put it the opposite way around, the temp ID has this effectively cached information, then I can basically modify, so if I go to my shield here, I can modify internally inside my cached ID, which is this object here being generated with its unique identifier, I can modify that value based in here. I know it's a bit convoluted, super useful though, very worth learning. Um, and basically I generate three shields, well my three shields as I normally do with the same positioning. Um, I go through the health factor, same principle there. And then my new health regen is the same idea, but it's slightly different. And I'll show you guys how that's different. Because the second part to this is I do have two different functions of disable here. So the first one is that disable as I've shown you, which is a hard, hard disable, just disables it completely. The second part though is this one here. This is an effective disable as well. So I can't actually modify this until criteria on this tree is fulfilled. And I'll show you how I've done that as well. Let me just quickly go through the shield buttons and then um, I'll basically all the buttons are the same except um, the regen buttons are a little bit different. So the shield button, every button has this set in there. This is a generic name for um, a reason as in I'm not going to sit there and change nine odd buttons worth of naming structure. Pretty simple, It's just it just dictates what level the, the button is that enables for the next skill to go through. Okay, in the step event, this is my classic programming here. This is just a button left click and my mouse instance to check the ID of where it is. 
The next part here is this is where the first layer of disable can come in. So you can see here, this actually does a check for disabling and if it sees it, you can't activate this button. So even though you can click on it and the ID is correct, it won't proceed forward. You can flip it around and move that onto the outside of your layer there and it'll make it technically partially more efficient because you won't be running extra checks, but it's not gonna harm anything. The next part here is where we actually do some of the guts of the, the logic programming for the buttons to work out how they behave. So this checks the global skill to see what level it's at. If it's equal to skill next minus one and you've got enough XP points, you can proceed. This is important because skill is always set one above of what's achieving it. We need to take one back and it's just part of the way the programming works. So if we go back into the core object here, you'll see I set it at one, two, three. So basically what I'm saying here is if basically skill one minus one or zero, so if they're equal to each other, proceed. And the reason for that is then when skill is one and we're taking one, so that's still zero, we can no longer activate that. That's the core logic behind that. And they all have the same logic. In here, and this is where the first button always differs from all of them. Um, the first starting button of any skill tree minus um, any secondary unlocks. In here, I draw the shield object, pretty stock standard. I'm not doing anything super fancy here. I check for disable. If it's disabled, I draw a gray marker around it, which is um, just retrieved out of here. So in here, you'll see, oh, too far. You'll see here, I'm accessing frame one. I set my alpha, that's just to give it some transparency because I'm being lazy and not drawing an extra um, sprite extra function. In here, this just green means it um, shows that it's been, uh, what's the word, activated. And pretty much stock standard, same principle, I access frame two. Okay, so that's button one. And I know that's a bit of a lengthy explanation. Button two is effectively the same, so I'm not going to go through the same level of detailing, but I will just show you that this draw function changes. I got stuck for about half an hour because I was having a brain fart thinking, why can't I get the first button to gray out? You can't really gray out the first button because there's no criteria to entry. On all the other buttons, there is a button criteria for entry. And what you'll see is this is actually minus two, super important. Again, it's to do with how the numbers work out. If it's not minus two, it's not gonna work properly. So in essence, all that's saying is, is if the skill tree is, um, because we've already spent the point, is greater than the skill that we've set, display as green, pretty much stock standard. So what that's doing is in here, if I load this back up, that's that green layering color that we're getting. That's all that's doing. Okay, now let's get on to the bit of the quirky mm, regen one and how I made that, or get, got that to work. So you guys are actually gonna see, there's no special criteria in here. It's still the next, it's still the skip, oh sorry, the step, and it's still the draw. But what is different with it, and I'll just jump right into it, is here you'll see that the actual skill levelings are three and four. And the way we achieve that is we actually look at the adding of, because it's a health skill, so I'm basing it off the overall health criteria. In here, if I go to the health button, and this is the thing I've kind of modified. So health one, we also add one to the health regen skill. And it won't do anything because it's major skill is still lower than the required three. But once we do it twice, we then enter into the criteria factor where it's actually enabled. So you'll see both of them have that. And in essence, this also acts as kind of a disable in that function. So the idea is once I've hit that criteria margin, I can then actually get into my health regen. And to show you that I can also disable it if I wanted to disable it, let's just jump right into here and we'll go straight down to regen. We'll change this fact to true and reload it and you'll see that it becomes disabled. Now, I can't enable it. So, that's pretty much it. This is gonna go on the Google Drive. Feel free to ask questions, I'm happy to answer them. 
I hope this made sense to you guys. Like I said, it's a bit convoluted, but think of it as just, it, it's essentially just like adding a number. And then once you've achieved that number for that skill set, you can then proceed to the next one. That's the basic idea. Okay. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later. And I'll see you next time.